Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Game and Fish Director Terry Steinwatt. Today we're going to review 2018 and preview 2019. Terry, what were some of the challenges in 2018? Like I tell staff and I tell everybody, challenges aren't hard to find. Our challenges in our business are, are going to be habitat related, uh, no matter what you're talking, whether you're talking deer or waterfowl or pheasants or fish or non-game birds, whatever. Those, those are always challenges because we always want to get the best out there that we possibly can. So habitat's number one. And you know, weather, which we can't control at all, can be another challenge, but some of that can be offset if you have the right habitat out there. Let's talk about some of the highlights in 2018. We had a lot of good fishing statewide again. We had great fishing. Lake Sakakawea, uh, I, I shouldn't say this, but if somebody would have asked me last spring, how's fishing in Lake Sakakawea going to be this year? I would have said, gosh, the fish population is fantastic. I don't think fishing is going to be that good because the smelt population had rebounded to almost record levels, meaning just a pile of food out there. Uh, when they have a lot of food, they typically don't bite that good. Boy, was I wrong, or I would have been wrong if I had made that statement. Uh, so Lake Sakakawea was by far the number one fishery out there, and it, and it stands. It's, between Lake Sakakwea, uh, Devil's Lake, and the Missouri River, Lake Oahe, those are always the top three. Well, Lake Sakakwea kind of took the crown this year, and it was a big crown because it was tremendous fishing. And, and we expect that actually for 2019 also. Sure. State walleye record was broken in the Missouri River system here. It, it, it was a fantastic fish. I'm actually surprised that it wasn't broken before because we know the fisheries crew crews know there are larger walleyes out there, whether it's Lake Sakakawe or Lake Oahe, the Missouri River. So it, it wasn't that much of a surprise, and, but we're really happy. We're happy for the individual that caught it, and we're certainly happy that it promotes the great fisheries we have in North Dakota. And deer numbers, we had more deer licenses this year than... We're, we're finally starting to, hopefully we bottomed out and we're starting to see the uptick in that. Uh, that's certainly our goal on it. Now, it, it's really frustrating for us, probably not as frustrating as the individual that doesn't get a deer license for four or five years, but uh, we had 40,000 people that applied for a deer license this year, did not get their first choice. Uh, they're frustrated, we're frustrated, we want to see that go up. Now, we can, but we just couldn't sustain anything like that. So uh, our, our wildlife division does a tremendous job of managing that population. Uh, we, we we're hoping to go up. And again, the way this winter is going right now, our survival should be pretty doggone good, I, I would say. So I think we're going to keep on that trajectory. Sure. And this was the first year that we went all electronic. This, this was the first year we went all electronic. Uh, we did hear some complaining. Uh, I'm not the most technologically literate person in the world, but I, I guess what I say is if I can do it, anybody can do it. But not everybody has a computer. Uh, not everybody has a credit card. But we, we did our best to accommodate those people, whether you go to a library, come to our Game and Fish offices, whether it's here in Bismarck or one of our district offices around the state. We will help you. And we actually did get some compliments that, hey, it really helped. Thank you. What it really did uh, for the past number of years, we've, we've been criticized, and probably rightfully so, that it takes so long to get the results out. You know, the first Wednesday in June is always the deadline for the deer applications. And it was taking us a month and a half to two months to get those, those results out, which, which was a little extended. I, yeah. I think we all could agree with that. Uh, this year, we got it in less than a month. Uh, there, there was a little concern that, okay, you had your lottery done so quick, how come we're not getting our licenses? Well, by law, the law says you cannot acquire a license until you have a deer gun license, until you have a uh, general game and habitat license. Right. which again you have to buy through the game and fish department it didn't affect some people like like us you know we buy our combination license earlier in the season so we go fishing and everything else but not everybody does that uh, so that caused a little concern but i think we've gotten over that hump and we're going to fix that to some extent too in 2019 for the guaranteed licenses the youth deer licenses the bow licenses uh, our system is the, has the ability to recognize whether you're not you have that general game or combination license already so, but if you don't, it's not going to let you proceed until you buy that license. So it should take care of that issue there. Sure, and we were able to tell that because of the new right. system. We, that good point, Mike. We were able to tell who did not have the general game and habitat license because of the system. 
Last winter we didn't have a lot of snow, but we did have some much needed spring moisture to help with the pheasant reproduction and waterfall reproduction. Right. Kind of across the board, don't forget our lakes, our recreational fisheries out there. Uh, a after the drought last year, we were seeing some of the wetlands drying up, uh, lake levels going out, and of course, uh, anybody that's a pheasant hunter noticed that the pheasant population was way down. We actually had a fairly decent pheasant hatch in 2017, but given the dry conditions, and, and if you can believe it, in North Dakota, we didn't have hardly any bugs, which is absolutely critical for the survival of those young pheasants. That, that's what they solely live on for the first few weeks of their life. Uh, as a result of that, of course, we didn't have a whole lot of carry of our adult pheasants to this year, to 2018. And even though we had a fantastic uh, weather conditions for a hatch this year, we just didn't have it across the state. And, and it's relatively normal in North Dakota to see isolated pockets of really good populations and some not. Uh, I did great in some spots. I did horrible in others. But yeah, the, we, we had that much needed rain, which really helped the waterfowl. Uh, it helped replenish some of the lakes. And I, I think as a game and fish agency, and, and I think even as a rancher out there, you, nobody likes to drive through a whole bunch of snow and feed the cattle and everything. We don't like to see it because it puts an awful lot of stress on wildlife, potentially causes winter kill on the lakes because of the snow cover. So if we can wait till March to get some good snow or get some really good spring rains, that's the perfect scenario. Okay, let's talk about some of the challenges that will continue into 2019. Habitat, it, it's always going to be a challenge. And get moisture, something we just can't control. Right now, we have about 430 to 450 lakes, uh, recreational fishing lakes out there. Uh, a lot of those 30 years ago were dry. They were potholes or they were dry. And they're providing tremendous local fisheries and statewide fisheries in some, to some extent. Uh, if we don't get those filled back up, I won't even say filled up, but if we get them up to a level where they can sustain those fisheries, we're probably going to lose some of those, which is going to be lost opportunity and lost economic drivers for the state of North Dakota. So that one, uh, waterfall, waterfall and fisheries kind of go hand in hand. Uh, if you think back to the late 80s, early 90s, the last major drought we had, fisheries and waterfall, uh, they were declining. With CRP, the abundant, uh, abundant habitat on the landscape, uh, the terrestrial species really came up, uh, sure. pheasants and deer. So wh with those issues, it's, it's always been a trade-off, and we always try to balance things. We, we recognize that over 90% of the state is privately owned, and there are private property rights out there that people expect to have. We can't tell them what to do. Hopefully we can influence and encourage them to, to put habitat on land to get those species back up. Because honestly, it is a culture of North Dakota. Hunting and fishing is a heritage. It's a culture of North Dakota and something we just don't want to lose. Um, the Farm Bill just recently passed. Right. Probably haven't had a chance to really go through it yet. Ha what have you been hearing about? Uh, hearing good things. Uh, very, very happy that it passed uh, because our Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program, CREP, which we've been working on for three years, we finally had approval, but we couldn't do anything because the Farm Bill hadn't passed yet. Uh, so we can get moving on that. that that's one thing. And that's going to be south central, southwest part of the state, primarily for habitat and water quality work. There, there is going to be an increase, incremental increase in conservation reserve program, CRP acres, uh, through, to, through to 2023. Um, there will be lesser payments. And again, not having actually seen the language yet, I've heard that it's going to be an 85% of what the, the county rate is for that particular county. So if you're in Stark County, it's going to be something different than Grand Forks County, as an example. But uh, other than that, I, I really can't say an awful lot more because I don't know a lot more. I think there's, I heard that there's going to be a voluntary program like our PLOTS program. It will actually pay more for public access. Let's move uh, into that PLOTS program, Terry. Yeah. Uh, how did the plots acres in 2018 we went up a little bit? Went up. Again, kind of the same trajectory, not by much, but it's the same trajectory as a deer license. It's not, not a direct correlation by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, we went over 760,000. Of course, our goal is still a million acres out there. It, it's a very, very lofty goal, but uh, uh, Kevin Kading and, and his, his, his crew do a wonderful job out there. It's not we could sign up a million acres in a heartbeat, I guarantee you. But we have the attitude is if we're going to have public access that the public is paying through through their license dollars, we want to make sure there's habitat out there. They have a reasonable expectation 
of finding something out there that, that they want to hunt. So uh, they've done a great job. And, and again, thanks to the private landowners, again, these are private lands. They are, they are not public lands. It's just public access, and it's not year-round. So you treat them like any other private lands. Uh, I, I can't thank those, those landowners enough for actually working with the Game and Fish and for a very admirable cause. Okay, let's move into chronic wasting disease and aquatic nuisance <coughs> species, Terry. Yep. Why don't you give me an update on both of those? Aquatic nuisance species, I have good news. As good as it can be, let's put it that way. We have not had any new infestations of aquatic nuisance species since the zebra mussel are found in the Red River. Uh, and that's with an awful lot of work by the fisheries crew, monitoring a lot, of, a lot of waters out there. Are there new aquatic plants that shouldn't be there? Are there, there new critters like zebra mussel that shouldn't be there? We have not found any of those. So it looks like our management scheme and the regulations are working. Uh, we always have to be vigilant, though, because if we're not, it can come in a heartbeat. And we kind of know, not kind of know, we do know, where the majority of the pressure comes from, where boating movement could move them. But it's more than just recreational fishing that does it. Uh, it can be water movement of any kind. It can be uh, a construction barge. Uh, uh, one thing about aquatic nuisance species, and in particular zebra mussel, it affects the recreational fishery, but it affects everybody in North Dakota because of municipal water supplies, irrigation, you know, industrial water supplies. If you get them in that body of water, it's very, very expensive to control those. Uh, the analogy with chronic wasting disease is we don't want it in North Dakota. Well, unfortunately, we have both in North Dakota. We have chronic wasting disease and have had for about 10 years in the south central part of the state, in Grant County, uh, 3F2 primarily. And, and we've implemented some, some management schemes, which is uh, no baiting allowed, which Standing Rock never has had baiting. South Dakota has never allowed baiting. Uh, plus, we've, we, we've managed that herd through the gun, meaning more hunting licenses down there, trying to keep that age structure down. Because CWD, as that deer gets older, if it's infected, it'll ultimately show the symptoms. And a lot of times, it won't show the symptoms, but it's shedding those prions that are on the landscape forever. Once you have it, it's, it's always going to be there. Uh, so we've had it down there for a ten, about 10 years. We're waiting for confirmation on another sample in the extreme northwest part of the state. I came back as preliminarily positive. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation from Iowa State on that right now. Uh, if that comes back confirmed positive, we're very likely going to be looking at proposing similar regulations to that. Legislative session coming up here pretty quick, Terry. You know, typically, uh, these legislators have a job to do. They're doing what they think is best for their constituents. Uh, we've developed very good relationship with most of them. Of course, we have some freshman legislators coming in that we'll have to go talk to them, un try to under get them to understand we do things based on biology primarily. Uh, sometimes we don't have the biological aspect to it, but the hunters and anglers of the state are emailing, calling us, and say, you've got to oppose this, you've got you to support this, whatever the case may be. Uh, so we take that into consideration, too, but we never, ever take a stance on anything until we've actually read the legislation, because if you agree to oppose or, or, or support something and you read the language, you go, gee whiz, that isn't what I expected. But in terms of now, we don't actually know what's coming in out there, and we won't know until the first week and a half. So I would encourage everybody to look on our website, because we'll have an update of what the bills are out there that are affecting the sportsmen and women of the state. The, the department, whether it be appropriations or something else. As we all know, Terry, winter can affect our wildlife populations. How would you rate this winter so far? I'd give it an A plus so far. You know, early October was, was pretty cold, uh, colder than normal. Since then, you know, we've had some portions of the state that's had some heavy snow, but I, I gotta give it a pretty good grade so far. You know, <laughs> I wish I could say, hey, look what we did. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done a thing on that. What, what helps us is, is you have open winters. Uh, you don't put the stress on the wildlife. You don't put the stress on, on the lakes. Uh, right now, we're getting good ice conditions forming out there. Maybe not so much with 40 degree temperatures, but there's still some decent ice out there. And if we would get any kind of snow right now of any, subs of any substance or amount, uh, that could put some of those fisheries that have declined or those water levels have declined in some of those lakes in some danger of winter kill. So if we can get by, with just a little bit of snow and then the sun come out and uh, melt it down, uh, we can wait till March. If, if we get some late spring rains or late snows, 
uh, we'll be fine. We just need some moisture. Well, and everybody would say we need moisture. It's just right. you don't want too much. You know. Sure. Again, <laughs> having seen what happened in Carolina, North Carolina, not that long ago, which is you think in North Carolina is is uh, let's go sit on the beach. They had like 15 inches of snow. Yeah. So I, I don't think we want that right now. Sure. But we still have a lot of winter to go. So yes, we do. Yes, we do. Thanks, Terry. A lot of good information. Thank you. Like Terry just mentioned, to track all Game of Fish related legislation, go to the Game of Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Game of Fish Director Terry Steinlin and the rest of the staff here at the Game of Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.